let's look at a physical parable for this gradualistic solution to a difficult problem. This is a mountain. It's called Mount Improbable. Sitting on the top of the mountain is equivalent to being very well designed, to being an eye that works very well, for example. Being at the bottom of the mountain is equivalent to being a distant ancestor that is not yet very well designed, that hasn't yet acquired its good fitness to the environment. Looking, facing you now, is a precipice, a cliff, which is called sheer luck. It's a sheer cliff. Jumping from the bottom of the cliff to the top corresponds to assembling a 747 by means of a hurricane or it corresponds to getting a complete eye in a single lucky mutation. It can't be done. You can no more do that than a mountaineer could leap from the bottom of a, of a cliff to the top. But this isn't the only route up Mount Improbable. We have to go round the other side. And you'll notice that round here is a gradual sloping path, steadily inching its way up the mountain. And if you follow it round, you'll find that even though some bits of it are a little bit steep, you can get from the bottom to the top without ever having to jump up a step. It's a gradual, inch by inch, path up. Anybody who didn't know about the ramp evolution, which is what that's called, would, if they saw an animal perched on the top, a beautifully designed animal, and only saw the cliff, they would assume that it had to be the result of a miracle. Richard Dawkins, the famous Oxford evolutionary biologist, has illustrated how the Darwinian mechanism works using a metaphor he calls climbing Mount Improbable. From the front side, the mountain is a sheer cliff that could never be scaled in one giant leap. For Dawkins, this represents the impossibility of creating a complex animal by chance alone. Yet Dawkins also envisioned an alternative route up the backside of Mount Improbable, a long, gradually sloping trail of small steps leading all the way to the summit. According to Dawkins, that's how you'd climb the mountain, and that's also how you'd build a Cambrian animal, one small step at a time. What chance alone can't accomplish in one blind leap, natural selection can accomplish through the cumulative effect of many small incremental steps. In theory, each step corresponds to a small unit of biological change, a new gene and its protein product. But do mutations and natural selection have a reasonable chance of producing even one protein in the time available? Since 1992, Molecular biologist Doug X has examined this question. There's a story that's being told, and there's a appeal in, in the case of Darwinism to random mutation and natural selection as being, in vague terms, the mechanism. But if you look at the detail, what kind of mutation can accomplish these transitions? And there, it's important to realize that the one area where we can really nail this down is at the single protein level, where you can actually measure it. And if you look at protein, structures to get a substantially new protein fold is prohibitively difficult. Each of the thousands of different proteins in nature is actually a chain made from a specific combination of 20 different amino acids. The sequential order of these chemical building blocks is crucial, for if they are arranged correctly, the chain folds into a functioning three-dimensional molecule. But if the amino acids are incorrectly assembled, no protein will form. If proteins are indeed rare among the possible sequences of amino acids, what are the odds that mutations would stumble upon a functional combination of chemicals from the vast number of alternatives? To find out, Hax randomly altered the structure of an enzyme protein comprised of 150 amino acids. You've got the protein 150 amino acids long, then you've got 20 to the 150th power possible ways of arranging the amino acids. Out of all those possibilities, how many are functional and how many are gibberish? 
If you do the experiments and you analyze how much information is required to get, say, a new protein fold, it's just far beyond what you can get by random mutation and natural selection. How far beyond? Dax published his findings in the Journal of Molecular Biology. He determined that among all the possible amino acid combinations, the probability of generating just one short protein by mutation is roughly 1 in 10 to the 74th power, or one chance in 100 trillion, 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 trillion. To put that in context, there's only 10 to the 65 atoms in the entire galaxy. So to build a new functional protein by selection and mutation within the time allowed for the Cambrian explosion, what you're essentially having to do is equivalent to a blindfolded man looking throughout the entire galaxy for one marked atom. So what we're talking about is searching for a tiny, tiny needle in a, an, an enormous haystack and, and having a very limited time to search. So on the question of something like the Cambrian explosion, there does not appear to be any way that unguided random mutations can accomplish what needs to be accomplished to explain new functional proteins. And certainly by extension, wherever in the history of life you would need to have multiple new protein folds, the probabilities multiply. So there's no reason to think that this is plausible.